Princess Kate has been spotted. Or has she? Producer Bree and I disagree on this. Also, singer-songwriter Lily Allen says children ruined her career. What's all that about? And also, we've got an amazing guest, Leanne Jameson. She is the director of a pregnancy center. She is going to tell us what is happening across the country at pregnancy centers, the good, the bad, and the ugly, and also talk to us about the importance of adoption and fostering. This episode is brought to you by our friends at Good Ranchers. Go to GoodRanchers.com. Use code Allie at checkout. That's GoodRanchers.com. Code Allie. Hey guys, welcome to Relatable. Happy Tuesday. Had to think about what day it was for just a second. Hope everyone's having a wonderful week so far. Okay, we got a lot, a lot as always to talk about. We had to make some executive decisions right before we started taping. I really wanted to talk about this whole Trump bloodbath thing because even though every other commentator and their mom is talking about this, and rightfully so, I did want to analyze it on my show too because I know my audience and I know that you've got some gals in your life who are or will sometime in the next few months send you the articles about Trump saying the word bloodbath at a rally to tell you why she could not possibly in good conscience vote for Donald Trump because he is calling for fascist violence. And while I want to debunk that, it's actually a lot like the segment that we have in the document with all the research. All the context is a lot. And because I have an awesome interview at the end of this episode, which ended up being longer than I originally thought that it would because my guest is just so, so amazing and we have so much to talk about, um, I don't have time to get to that today. So we're going to get it into a couple other things that are going to be a little bit quicker, but we will get to that because I do know it's important and I want you guys to have something to fall back on, information, context, all the facts surrounding that when that conversation comes up with your relative, with your friend, with whomever, so you can be armed with the facts about that. Okay, before we get into it, I have a couple clothing related things to say. One, of course, is our merch, AllieMerch.com. We've got awesome merch up right now. The uh, You're Not Enough and That's Okay crew necks, t-shirts, hats, or not, sorry, not You're Not Enough and That's Okay. That's the name of my book. You're Not Enough, But Jesus is I've been wearing my beige You're Not Enough, But Jesus is crew neck like every chance I can get absolutely love this merch. I've heard from a lot of y'all that this is like your favorite. So when it comes in, um, make sure that you post it and you tag me so I can see it. You're not enough, but Jesus is great conversation starter. It started a conversation for me just over the weekend. I was wearing it. Someone's like, Oh, I like your sweatshirt. They only saw the back of it. And then I got to talk about what the front says. So it's a great evangelistic tool. Okay. Also another clothing related announcement. Sydney McLaughlin Lavrone. She is that amazing Olympic champion runner who is a Christian, very outspoken about her faith. You probably saw her because she's like just this beautiful beacon of Christian light in the athletic world. Anyway, she's awesome. Okay. She sent me the coolest stuff because she has a partnership right now with New Balance. I'm not getting paid to say this. This is not an advertisement, but I got this package in yesterday. I don't know if we can go to the wide shot and you can see these shoes, which are amazing. They're way too cool for me because I am not cool. And these shoes are really cool and they're really trendy and I love them and they're super comfortable, but y'all should go check that out. Again, this is not an advertisement. I and these sweatpants too. Super comfortable, super comfortable. Um, Y'all should check that out. She's got a partnership right now with New Balance, Sydney McLaughlin. She and her husband, just like amazing and beautiful people. Um, you should follow them too because they're just like very encouraging, godly people. But also she is very fashionable. So she's got this new partnership out and I've got some cool new shoes. So thanks so much, Sydney. Okay, before we get to the rest of the stuff, let me tell you about our first sponsor for the day. That's Adele Natural Cosmetics. I love talking to you about Adele because I love their products. They are a toxin-free company. They use all natural ingredients, all from God's medicine cabinet. And Arlene started this company several years ago because of her own health concerns. She had a health scare back in 1999, and she wanted to make sure that everything that she's putting in and on her body is good for her. So she 
she started Adele Natural Cosmetics and they make uh, skincare, they make makeup with all these holistic toxin free ingredients and they really work. I've seen a really big difference in my skin, just the smoothness and the texture. I also love their cream foundation, their cream blush, their highlighter. It's really great, especially if you like light to medium coverage. They're a great family, Christian, unapologetically pro-life and I really like their skincare a lot. It's very high end and it will do wonders for your skin. Go to AdeleNaturalCosmetics.com. Use code Allie for 25% off your first time purchase. AdeleNaturalCosmetics.com, code Allie. Okay, we got a Kate Middleton update. This is also what is taking up some of the time, not just in today's episode, but in my life. Uh, Kate Middleton has taken up a lot of my life over the past few days because I, like every other gal out there have just been thinking randomly oh oh where's Kate where's Kate where's Kate I think that I'm busy doing something else I think I'm taking care of some responsibility and then she just pops into my head I'm like hey I hope that she's okay we went through all the theories last week about where she is and why people just weren't really taking the palace's statements about what happened to her her whereabouts her recovery why they weren't taking them seriously why there were theories, the whole photo gate editing thing. We went through all of that. And there, of course, if you're following this on social media, there are more theories and more details every day. Uh, but now there is another update that you think would quell all of the rumors and the conspiracies, but it has not. So here is uh, what TMZ is saying is Will and Kate at a farm shop over the weekend, I guess that's like a farmer's market. Is that what the British, the a farm shop uh, over the weekend in a video obtained by TMZ. Um, here they are at Sot 7. Well, the music does not help. That, I mean, that alone gives me a lot of just conspiracy vibes. Um, I don't know if that's purposeful or not, but that just makes me think that something is really going on. So anyway, that is, that that's supposed to be Kate and Will. And the reason I say supposed to be is because a lot of people are saying this is not Kate and Will. That's not really Will. That's not really Kate. They have put in a stand in. But if we pull up some of the pictures, which we will if you're watching on YouTube, and it's not the best quality because all anyone has is like a screenshot uh, of the video. People are saying that this does not look like them. I think it does. I think it does. Now, granted, maybe my eyes aren't that great because I also didn't see any of the editing problems and the picture that went viral and that other people caught and they were right by the way it was edited and I just didn't see that and so maybe I'm crazy here but this looks like Kate to me and like real why would they if they were going to put out a clone <laughs> if they were going to put out um you know a stand-in to try to falsely the conspiracy goes signal that she's okay to the world I don't think that they would have chosen this scenario they would have like at the farmer's market with them so dressed down and I I just don't think so plus she looks really thin so if she really had abdominal surgery now sources are apparently saying bowel surgery specifically which was a theory that a lot of you had by the way that she had a bag that's associated with bowel surgery. It can be extremely invasive and the recovery can be really long. Um, it would make sense that she had lost some weight. So if the palace were trying to signal, hey, everything's fine by putting in a stand-in for the paparazzi to catch, I don't think that they would have chosen someone who looks this thin. Because her thinness also is sparking concerns, further concerns from people saying, wow, is she okay? She looks so small. I think that they would have put out someone who looks healthier. But it would make sense if she really did have this kind of abdominal surgery. Um, I saw, I don't remember what it was, but I saw a post saying she didn't have abdominal surgery. She had bowel surgery. I don't understand that. The bowel is in the 
abdomen. So I understand why they didn't want to say bowel surgery because that's a little embarrassing and it's a little crude. And so maybe they were trying to protect her her image. I don't know. I don't think the palace has done a good job with PR, but I think that's what they were trying to do. Um, anyway, all that to say, like, it makes sense that she looks really small and maybe that her face looks a little bit different, too. Because one, when you've been sick and you've been depleted, your face is going to look different. Your hair is going to look different. Your bone structure is going to look different. And if you're really thin, and she does look really thin, she was already thin before, she looks even thinner than that, that changes what your face looks like. And yes, I do think this looks like Prince William, by the way. I just do. I think, honestly, a lot of people, and I love a good theory, I'll even entertain a conspiracy for a sec. But I do think people, and we saw this so much with the QAnon stuff with Trump, like people are very addicted to fall, like continuing a conspiracy. I'm not, I don't know. I don't know all the details to this. Maybe some of the theories, there is some truth to them, uh, both, you know, before this and since, and since this picture and video was released. But I do think just beware that there are some people who have gained a lot of, viral attention, virality, if you will, over the past few weeks or few days because of this, that they're going to cling to dear to this to for dear life because their fame and their prominence is now dependent upon it. I'm not saying that there aren't questions to ask. I think it's all fair. I think it's all been fair, especially up to this point, to ask some questions and to have some concerns. Like I said, I have those questions. I had those concerns. Um, but I, I, I do think that we are probably at this point about done with the extensive conspiracies, right? Again, there are some questions. Questions remain. We'll see what happens on Easter as I have seen people say, although I said this from the beginning, but I've seen people say that it is interesting that she is resurrecting on Easter. Yeah, I made that connection too. I think it's interesting too. I don't think there's like a reason for it necessarily. I don't think the symbolism is purposeful. It's just interesting. So this was interesting while it lasted. And unless there are other developments I probably don't have that much more to say about that. I'm sure there will be other people who have commentary on this who are much more interested in the royals. I just wanted to make sure that our girl was okay, that her kids are okay. But I will say, I did not know that they went to farmer's markets casually on the weekends with their little zip-ups and hats. Bree's shaking her head. Okay, Bree, come on. You have a conspiracy about real. this? <laughs> it's not real. You're I don't one think of it's real. Okay, come on. Tell <laughs> it us. just doesn't. I've seen that there is not a body double, but an impersonator who you have seen. Yeah, there are pictures of her. Her name's Heidi. She's an actual Kate Middleton Do we have impersonator. Her picture? We can put it up. Um, I'm just see. I just saw that this morning, and I think it looks more like her. Is she thin like this? Yes. This thin? She, She's yeah. This is tiny Kate. The photo to me looks just like her. And she apparently has a Will impersonator also. <laughs> so I think it's them. But why? Okay, but answer my questions at the beginning. If they were <laughs> going to put in stand-ins to signal to everyone that, okay, we're all well and good here. Everyone's mm -hmm. healthy. Why would they choose this scenario with this type of clothing, this si kind of weird situation of a farmer's market, and have her look so thin? But isn't it, I don't know, but isn't it also weird that she supposedly is like on bed rest or recovering from surgery? She looks very spry in this photo, in this, in this video. Well, she's walking did, like there's did they nothing say wrong. Bed rest? Did, did well, they say no, that not she's necessarily, still but she's rest? in recovery. And I'm wondering why, if she looks perfectly fine here, why she they couldn't really have ever. Skinny. Yeah, but if she's going to go out anyway, why couldn't they just record a video of her? being normal like why all the weird why all the weird stuff well maybe and i'm just playing devil's advocate because i don't know <laughs> but maybe they are just trying not to i don't know i was gonna say try not to respond to what they think are ridiculous absurd conspiracies although they did put out the picture which i think was yeah. a response to the conspiracies yeah but maybe she's like, no, I am not doing that. And she knows she looks super thin. 
Now, here's what I will say. Here's what I will say is that this picture of her does make me realize that the picture that they put out that was so edited that they say was a very recent picture, I do not think it was a recent picture because she doesn't look that thin. She does obviously thin, but not this thin. Mm -hmm. in that picture she looks different here than she did there so that does make me think that they lied about the timing of that photo yeah or or this isn't real i think personally so do you think the palace (laughs) sends out their dupes um or do yeah, because I don't know why they would be together. I mean, unless this Kate impersonator and this Will impersonator are like together, it. right? Then I don't know why they would be together for this photo. So yes, but yeah, I mean, you're right. There are questions about like why would they do it like this? But I mean, it's a it's a blurry video. I also saw something on Twitter that someone like zooming in on an iPhone on a, at a Rihanna concert from like way in the nosebleed seats and you can see her perfectly. And people are like, if you can get images like this on an iPhone now, then why can't you we can get see the Rihanna clearest perfectly? photo? Yeah, when okay, they zoom I in. I thought you meant Kate Middleton. And oh, I was sorry. Like, Whoa, what? <laughs> no. Kate Middleton is actually at Rihanna concerts <laughs> and everyone knows that? How did I miss that? No, okay. no. Just an example of how iPhones are so good now that really we should have a very clear photo of Kate Middleton if she's really walking around London, you know? I just think that that <laughs> looks just like her. And just like Will, but I mean, if you're telling me that this, okay, I'm looking this up because I haven't (laughs) seen this Heidi person, Heidi, Kate Middleton impersonator. Um, okay. I'm going to, let me see this person. Oh, wow. Okay. They do look alike. I don't think that the, that the Will guy looks like. They do look alike. I mean, really hard to tell, though. They don't look exactly alike. But the video is kind of blurry. It is kind of blurry. I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, saying, well, I'm... we can agree to disagree. No, I think that looks like Kate. I really do. Yeah, I'm full I... tinfoil hat at this point, but I understand the arguments against that. Okay, well, maybe we'll just keep that. We'll keep our updates alive because I'm sure there are people that are in the camp that you are. <laughs> All right, time for our next sponsor for the day, and that is Good Ranchers. Did you know that mRNA vaccines are approved and in use right now for pigs in the United States? So we're talking like real mystery meat. This is true for a lot of livestock in the United States. So for all of us who have proudly remained unvaccinated when it comes to the COVID-19 vaccine, we now have to worry about getting mRNA, which we know can have some consequences uh, in our meat. But you don't have to worry about that with Good Ranchers because not only is all of their meat from American farms and ranches, but it's also mRNA free. This is just another reason to get your meat from Good Ranchers in addition to getting really great high quality meat, in addition to supporting a company that is owned by a Christian and conservative family, in addition to the convenience of it, you don't have to go to the store and try to pick out the right cuts of meat. You don't have to worry about that. You instead can get your meat showing up at your front door once a month with the seafood, the chicken, and all the beef that you want, and it just makes your life so much easier. If you go to goodranchers.com right now and you use code Allie, you can get a free Easter ham, 10-pound Easter ham with any subscription, a free 10-pound Easter ham with any subscription, plus you can get $25 off any box. Go to goodranchers.com, code Allie. Okay, I've been wanting to talk about this uh, Lily Allen story. I saw this quote from her uh, where she said, I never really had a strategy when it comes to my career, but yes, my children ruined my career. And I thought, wow, that's such a difficult message to put out there, such a harsh message, I should say, to put out there about 
children and I wanted to talk about it because I looked at the full context and I actually think that our response to something like that that initially is like jolting and we understandably have a negative reaction to I I do think it's a little bit layered and nuanced and I think it's important to share this perspective so for those of you who don't know she is a 38 year old British singer songwriter and um she was uh, really like topping the charts, like more of at the height of her fame several years ago. She's got a few good songs. And on the March 12th episode, or, you know, maybe she has a lot of good songs. I just am not someone who is super, super familiar uh, with all of her music. But I know that she has a lot of um, very diehard adoring fans. So uh, she, on a March 12th episode of the Radio Times podcast, she made headlines for saying this comment about children and her career uh here's stop five uh, yes my children ruined my career <laughs> <laughs> Did they? i mean i love them and they complete me but in terms of like you know pop stardom totally ruined it and really annoys me when people say you can have it all because quite frankly you can't. you can't and you know some people choose their career over their children and that's their prerogative but you know my parents were quite absent when i was a kid and I feel like that really left some like nasty scars that I'm not willing to, you know, to repeat so online. Good. And so I chose stepping back and concentrating on them. And I'm glad that I've done that because I think they're pretty well-rounded people. Hmm. See, the context completely changes the quote that has been extracted from that episode and has made headlines. And I have no idea if this bothers her, but if I were her, it would really bother me. And of course, it's clickbait. That's just what happens. But um, Cosmopolitan Lily Allen says having kids ruined her career. But then the person goes on to say, the author of this, as a mother, I think she has a point. Um, and then there are several other headlines who said this, who say the same thing who use that particular quote and I saw a graphic I don't know if it was entertainment tonight I don't remember who uh, originally posted it and that's all it said Lily Allen says that children ruined her career but as you can see from the context like First of all, she's saying it tongue in cheek. It said she uses the word ruined, which I don't think is like the best word to use, but she's using it purposely. She's using it for shock value. She's using it to make a point. And she makes a point that I think is really important for us to hear that you really cannot have it all. You can't have it all. And that's okay. Like this is another lie that we're told in addition to you are enough, in addition to you're perfect the way that you are, in addition to you're entitled to your dreams, like all these lies that we've talked about so many times on this show, they're fed to women so often from the self-help, self-love culture um, that you really can have it all and that your happiness and your convenience and your dreams and your goals come first and everything and everyone else gets deprioritized and has to sacrifice on behalf of what you want. And at the end of it, you'll just be happy that you fulfilled all of your desires. Well, that is a really big lie. And I do think that more and more women are waking up to this. But I think it's actually a mistake of the pro-life movement that I see a lot, uh, that you can have it all. No, by choosing life for your baby, you can absolutely do all of the career things that you wanted to do. Uh, to me, that's like a form of the feminist deceit that we see in mainstream pro-choice secular culture um, because it's not really true. I mean, Lily Allen is right. You cannot have it all, all at once. I know this from personal experience. I would never use the word ruined, but again, I think she's just trying to make the point is that uh, there were a lot of things uh, to say no to once I started having kids. You know, I was doing this for four years before I um, had a child. I mean, not the podcast, but I was, you know, speaking and the social media and all of that, doing the Fox News interviews uh, before I had kids. And man, it was go, go, go. I look back at my husband's and my life back then and how much we were working, how much we were gone, how much we were saying yes to, because that was the season that we were in. And, you know, it was an okay season. It was a fine season. And then once I got pregnant and once I had our first kid, there was a lot more no. 
I stopped traveling. I stopped doing those Fox and Friends interviews. I mean, I was waking up for Fox and Friends or Fox and Friends first, sometimes at 2, 3, 4, 5 a.m. I was saying yes to every interview, to every opportunity. Again, that was just the stage that I was in that stopped when I had kids. Not everything stopped, but a lot of things stopped. And after every child, I've said no to more and more things. I don't travel like I used to. I don't really do interviews at all anymore. I don't do media anymore. I gave up a consistent writing gig that I was doing. Um, and maybe it might seem like it's not that much to do two articles a month, uh, but I loved it. But I had to say no to that because I no longer have that margin. I no longer have that time. Really, this podcast and the um, the speaking uh, that I that I do about once or a month, where most of my family comes with me, typically for that. That's you know a, a choice that we make based on just a variety of factors for every different speaking engagement. But that's like a whole family affair. Very often, it just looks so different than it did back in 2018. It looks so different. Um, all I have time for really is this podcast, which I have an entire awesome team behind me that helps me do that. And um, the speaking that I do, and that is like a fraction of what I used to do. I used to travel a lot more before I had kids and it was easier with one, it was easier with two. And then with every child, you say no to more and more that is not related to them. That's just part of it. And that doesn't mean that you always, that there's... Um, uh, that you don't have anything. Like there are plenty of moms who have an Etsy shop who are, you know, influencers in some way and who dedicate time to different parts of their craft. And so there are different ways that that looks, but it is always true that when you are prioritizing your children and prioritizing your family, that there are some sacrifices in other areas to be made. There is always going to be a trade-off. And so Lily Allen is right about that. Uh, again, I wouldn't use the word ruin because that sacrifice is 100% worth it. And I think that she did end up saying as much, um, but it's 100% worth it. The saying no to other things is 100% worth it. And I am very thankful for like the flexibility and the schedule that I have. It is totally a dream. Um, that I get to prioritize my time and my energy the way that I can. I understand that that's not possible for everyone. I understand that there are different situations. There are single moms out there. You're doing the best that you possibly can. Um, but she's right. She's right. There is a trade-off. Now, just to be fair also to the pro-life message who they are trying to say that you, it's not a uh, life ruining and it's not it, having a child and choosing life for your child instead of abortion doesn't mean that you are never going to be able to do the things that you are on track um, to do. And I think that that is true. And I think that that is an important message. But it also needs to be said that there will be sacrifice, there will be giving up, there will be trade offs, and that those things are actually good. I, I don't want us to feed into the culture of all sacrifice is bad. All giving up is bad. All trade-offs are bad. All dying to yourself is bad because it's actually what is life-giving. It is actually so much more fulfilling and so much more satisfying than um, just constantly fulfilling your desires or chasing your dreams. Um, those things can be good when they are sub in submission to God's will. Uh, but they cannot be supreme. They cannot be number one. And I'm actually really glad that Lily Allen was willing to say that and that she allowed her childhood and the negatives that she experienced there to inform how she is parenting, um, parenting her children. When you look at the Proverbs 31 woman, it really looks at the different responsibilities that she had, not in one day, but throughout her life. There are just different seasons. There are different seasons for different yeses and different nos. Um, and yes, as women, our families, our children, as, as moms and wives, that is, um, they should absolutely come first. And there will always be sacrifices to make. And I think that looks differently 
um, in different stages of life. It looks differently for different women. It looks differently based on what has what God has called you to do and what he has equipped uh, you to do. But I do think it's clear that that comes first and there will be sacrifices in other areas 100%. And it is worth it. It is worth, they are worth every single no that I have given to other things and continue to give to other things. Um, big no's and small no's so that I can be as, you know, present as I possibly can and um, still dedicate some time to this, which I love and God has called me to and in this season has equipped me to do. So anyway, I'm encouraged by someone kind of, I guess, in secular culture, I don't really know what she believes, but just talking about this, talking about the importance and the necessity of sacrifice and giving up, especially when it comes to raising children. Um, just because it's difficult doesn't mean that it's wrong or that we should put it off. Sacrifice is good and it's very life-giving. Um, all right. Um, and also like, I do just want to say this is such a counter to the, uh, this is such a counter to Olivia Rodrigo, who is a singer who is giving the message to her young, young audience that yes, you should just do what's most convenient. You should do what's easiest. You should do what's, what feels good in the moment. And you should only do what you want to do no matter what, no sacrifices, no commitment, no difficulty by passing out the plan B at her concert as we talked about last week. Crazy, crazy stuff out there. Um, motherhood, I will just, I'll finish on this. Motherhood is an extremely, extremely high calling. Um, it's a calling by God. Of course, we know that. But also, I do want to emphasize this, that um, it's not just like inconvenience and dying to self and discomfort. It is also really fun. It's also really fun and it's really joyful and it makes you, I think it makes you a better person. I'm not saying that people who don't have kids are not good people or that they can't be awesome and generous and joyful and all of that, but it is so sanctifying. It is so incredibly sanctifying it causes you to have self-control and control your emotions and to be more patient. It causes you to be more sympathetic and loving and compassionate. Um, it causes you to be more creative. It helps you become a better leader, a better manager of people. It helps you understand and manage different personalities better. Um, gosh, I can't even count all of the ways that motherhood has sanctified me, has sanctified uh, the women around me. And also it's just a good time. Like it really is. Not every moment is like the most fun or the easiest, but motherhood is such a good time. And it is such a wonderful example of the gospel and you just have a whole different level of understanding of God's love for us when you have these little people who are walking around in front of you and you're like oh my gosh I would literally die for you a thousand times it's crazy it's crazy and the studies back up too that um parenting makes you happier in the long run it makes you happier it makes you more fulfilled it makes you more satisfied it makes you more successful holistically and so have kids have kids as i've said many times if you are married have kids if you can that could mean fostering and adopting that could mean having your own biological kids but have children um, don't put it off for travel. Don't put it off for your career. Don't put it off for fear. Don't put it off for comfort or convenience. None of those are biblical reasons to put off having kids. Go ahead um, and have your kids. And I've gotten many a sonogram picture over the years from people who, after they've uh, heard me or someone on this podcast say that, uh, say, okay, fine, we decided to have kids. And I just always praise God for those messages. Um, okay, speaking of having kids and speaking of adoption and the importance of caring for children, our next guest is amazing. Leanne Jamison, we've had her on before. She is the director of a Pregnancy Center in Texas, Prestonwood Pregnancy Center. You guys have donated many baby items and mom items to this pregnancy center in the past and she'll talk a little bit about that but she's here today 
to talk about um, some of the updates in the abortion landscape and what pregnancy centers need, what they're seeing, some of the new obstacles that they're facing. Uh, But also she is going to um, give us a lot of encouragement about how God is moving through the obedience of his people uh, by loving the most vulnerable. And then she'll also talk about adoption and this adoption conference that's coming up uh, in Texas. And she will have uh, some uh, a convicting message for all of us Christians as we consider how we can help the fatherless and help the orphan. Uh, before we get into that amazing, amazing, encouraging conversation, let me pause. Let me tell you about our next sponsor for the day. And that is Jace Medical. So Jace Medical is a company that provides you with a year-long supply of the medications that you and your family rely on. So the most common antibiotics and also the prescriptions that you and your family take on a daily basis. And this is just in case something happens with the supply chain, you're unable to get your medicine in whatever situation it may be uh, through the traditional means, you'll have a year long stash that you can have in case of emergencies. This is a really, really great way to be prepared. We know that we just can't predict the future. And if you want to be better safe than sorry, when it comes to your family's medication, then go ahead and go to jacemedical.com, use code Allie, go through their telemedicine process. They'll get you that year-long stash of life-saving medications, jacemedical.com, code Allie. Leanne, thanks so much for taking the time to join us again. I so appreciate it. Um, I've already introduced you, and you've been on the show before talking about your work at the Pregnancy Center. Uh, But give us, again, just a lay of the land. Now, we are almost two years Mm. post the Dobbs decision, Mm. post the overturning of Roe. Praise God. Um, Working on the front lines at a pregnancy Mm. center, what are you seeing? Yeah, it uh, it's interesting because I I mean we all celebrate uh, Roe v. Wade being overturned, and in states like Texas, the trigger law that went into effect making um, abortion illegal in the state. Uh, but I have said, and I continue to say, it it may be illegal, but it is far from unattainable, and certainly not yet unthinkable. And the unthinkable part is going to require spiritual revival in our nation. Um, And the unattainable part, that's really what we're seeing in the pregnancy center right now. We're seeing a lot, an increase in um, chemical abortion and women accessing abortion uh, online. Mm-hmm. And abortion pills. The abortion pill. So yeah. they can order them online. They show up at their exactly. front door. They don't have to go to the doctor. They do not. And uh, I mean, there's a website called Plan C as an example um, that for no to very little cost, you can get those pills delivered to your home. Mm-hmm. And, you know, uh, at the center, we... I mean, I had heard it was really simple. And we have a video coming out of us ordering the abortion pill online with little to no questions or screening. And within two days that those pills arrive. And And that's legal in the state of Texas. Uh, (laughs) It's tricky. It's tricky. I think this is um, debatable. I think it's, you know, it's a very hard thing to manage. Um, You know, that is a question probably for our politicians as to where that all fits in the trigger law and, you know, mail Mm -hmm. order medications. But at the center, Allie, what is most concerning to me is that we say And certainly the other side has really built the narrative around the fact of reproductive health and that we care for the women and that, you know, we're concerned for their well-being with the implication that pregnancy centers, pro-life centers do not. And when we have women coming into the center who are bleeding or are struggling to know what they took and what's happening, and they bring in medication with the instructions in a foreign language Hmm. where they've had no... Foreign to them? Foreign to them. Like that it's in English? I mean, we've had someone come in with Russian 
Oh, um, yeah. Oh, oh. So where there's no no explanation of the oh, how, goodness. the concerns, what they should be looking for. That's not love. That's not care for women. That's wow. not reproductive health. And we're seeing quite a bit of that. We're and seeing they don't women even have to get a sonogram to verify no, how far along nothing. they are. And you're supposed to yes. supposed to take these pills within like the first six to eight weeks, I believe, yes. maybe even up to 12 weeks, though I'm not sure about that. I'm pretty sure it's within yes. the first 10 weeks at most. Yes, at the most. Yeah. So, and, you know, some women, if they haven't had a sonogram, they don't know how far along they are. I mean, this could be women 16 weeks pregnant trying to take this pill. Absolutely. And, I mean, we know that. We, statistically, I mean, we saw in 30, almost 32,000 client visits last year at at our centers. Wow. And I can tell you that there is a large percentage of women that walk in our center that think they're a certain, you know, that they're at a certain point in their pregnancy when in fact they're much farther along. Mm -hmm. And so uh, to, to rely on a woman saying, you know, I'm pretty sure that this is when my last first day of last miss period is and I'm this far along, therefore I should be able to take the abortion pill to not even have to talk to someone, but to be able to order this online and have it come to the privacy of your home. Um, you know, it's 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 disturbing. Yeah. So you're seeing a lot of these women after they've taken the pills, they show up at your center. Yes. So, yeah, I mean, we have seen because so many of these women have gotten the the medication. I hesitate. It's not medication. Let's call it the abortion pills um, through a way where they're not getting any support with a lot of fear and shame. They will show up at our at our center. Um looking to know, like they're looking for to know, was this effective? Am I still pregnant? Why am I bleeding? Why am I having some of these issues? To the point where right now one of our major product projects this year is trying to figure out how we provide care to those women. Um, because Jesus is about restoration and redemption. And we know we can take care of her emotionally and spiritually. We have licensed professional counselors on staff and medical staff um, that, you know, can do those, that initial part. But what we want to do is be able to really care for her um, physical needs along with her spiritual and her emotional. So, Right. Wow. So that's just kind of a new challenge that yeah. has unfolded in the last couple of years, probably yeah. something that was pretty unforeseen after the overturning of Roe. I think so. I think for a little while, probably most of the pregnancy centers in states with um, trigger laws in place or maybe very quickly put laws in place to eliminate abortion within their borders, I think would tell you that we saw a dip. We saw a different type of client. We saw a different maybe emotional state to the client. We did a lot of education in those early months. People did not truly understand what that meant and what it meant in their state and what was next for them. So we did a lot of education. It was a lot of just empowerment and assurance and looking at those reasons why maybe they were panicked about being pregnant. And we've always done this, but helped them problem solve through it. And uh, and then, you know, for a while we saw a dip in the abortion rates. I think um, I think it was just maybe the other side getting some things put into place mm -hmm. that we now see mm -hmm. easily found online. Mm -hmm. And uh, and it has increased. I mean, they're now reporting an increase in abortion, particularly a chemical abortion, the abortion pills. And I, I kind of believe that's underreported because I don't believe that sites or foreign providers are reporting. I know they're not reporting the right. numbers that they're providing. So. Right.
All right, another pause to tell you about our next sponsor, and that is My Patriot Supply. This is another way to be prepared, not paranoid, but prepared to have a food supply on deck just in case for whatever reason you're not able to access food supply through the normal methods you're not able to go to the grocery store you just want to have this just in case my patriot supply has this emergency food kit a three-month emergency food kit 2,000 calories a day it can last in storage for up to 25 years you'll want to get a kit for every member of your family uh, one kit every member of your family these are 2,000 calorie delivery delicious meals that you and your family can enjoy in case of an emergency. Again, just better to be safe than sorry. If you go to preparewithally.com, you will save $200 per kit. That is a really good deal. Go to preparewithally.com. And just remind us, um, besides this kind of post-abortive care, new kind of post-abortive yeah. care that you guys are offering, mm -hmm. what does a pregnancy center like yours really do? Well, certainly that's our mission is to help those that find themselves in that unplanned pregnancy make a life-affirming decision. Um, you know, from um, the moment uh, that they believe that they might be pregnant, we're there we're available. We do a lot of marketing to ensure that we position ourselves in a way that we're easily found so that she comes to us. We're a safe place, Allie Beth. Like we, um, contrary to news reports out there, we provide love and truth and grace. We are there merely to help them problem solve, to rather than have them react to their situation, we want them to respond. Because reaction means that things like the abortion pill, that's what they're feeding off of, is this immediate panic and the fear. And, you know, I, fear is a very uncomfortable emotion and it begs to be tended to. And mm. so, we're just there to say, okay, let's take a breath and let's look at your situation, not just the pregnancy, but the reasons why you're finding yourself in a pregnancy center asking about abortion. Let's look at those reasons because here's the truth. Abortion doesn't take those reasons off the table. That financial situation you're in, you're still going to be in that same financial situation, if not possibly worse. Or the relationship issues, you know, the fact that you're with a guy that you don't want to be the parent father of this baby, then we need to talk about that. Those circumstances that are pushing them towards abortion. And then what we find when we really sit with her and we just love her first, because she's as much a life that has value and purpose that God sent his son to die on the cross for. Then when we go to talk about, okay, let's now talk about this pregnancy. She trusts us because she knows we're not the decision maker here. You, She is. And we know we're not the heart changer. Jesus is. And we're just a conduit. And that means sometimes, um, praise Jesus, we're see him work more often through us and we see success than not. But that means sometimes you're loving her as she walks out the door and telling her, we know this isn't what's best for you, but we love you and we're here for you. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that's why sometimes when they're struggling, even years after, we just this week had a woman call the center that was our client years ago that chose abortion and she's struggling right now in life with just a whole bunch of stuff. She's not pregnant right now, but she doesn't know where to turn and who does mm -hmm. she turn to but us. And um, and she wants to come in and talk about Jesus. And that's pretty amazing. That is pretty amazing. I'm sure that Planned Parenthood don't get me many calls. They probably don't um, receive a whole lot of requests for counseling years after someone got yeah. an abortion. And even if they did, they wouldn't have any resources for them. 
I would say there's a difference between being transactional and transformational. Mm -hmm. And that requires Jesus. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, we're still doing sonograms and we're doing pregnancy tests and, and we are growing. All and, kinds of things for them. Yes, the Parenting resource classes, center. The resource center that you guys beautiful. are amazingly supportive of. Yes. In fact, actually, just to give you an update on that, because you and your your listeners have been such an incredible support to our resource center. A couple of just amazing things. One was we, um, well, we kind of made a mistake. Actually, Alibeth, we put out just a general call of like, hey, we've got some toys used, gently used. And, you know, come in, we'll give you a $30, 30 point credit at the, at the resource center because everything's free um, there. And you can come pick a Christmas gift for your child. So it was supposed to start at nine o'clock. We arrive at eight thirty because we'd already set up and we were ready. And the lineup was around the block. Wow. We were completely cleared out of everything. The needs, the needs were so great. They were heartbroken. I, w we were all assuming, okay, it's such an opportunity to get your little one a toy. But they were there because it, Christmas is hard mm -hmm. and it's expensive and they were needing diapers and wipes and formula and yeah. just basic Not items. Not just a toy. And that's when we reached out to you and you responded. And I'm sure a lot of your, uh, your listeners noticed that our list was really just basic needs. And again, I love that when... <laughs> <laughs> Amazon calls us to say, okay, we've got two truckloads <laughs> of items for you. Do you realize how much that is? And are you capable of receiving this? <laughs> that, that blesses our clients. But I just want to thank you and your listeners because you bless the staff. It was, oh, it makes me cry. It was probably the greatest Christmas gift I received this oh, year was getting to go over there and open boxes and just, I mean, I, at one point, one of my staff walked in and I was holding shampoo, like shampoo, just thinking, Lord, you know, we needed, we need shampoo. We mm -hmm. need, you know, we needed all this stuff. So thank you. This, um, the 27th of March, we had uh, gotten a gift of used, um, I think they're called umbrella strollers, right? The mm -hmm. really little, mm -hmm. like easy to easy pack up portable, ones. Yeah. So we had a gift of some used ones, and uh, I th I think a hundred. And so we decided wow. to do. Yeah. They were they were ones that were lost at the airport or left, oh, wow. and so the okay. agency that recovers that stuff and resells it, they apparently they don't sell. So their loss, our benefit. I'm so grateful. For for them um, being pro-life and Christian, uh, they were able to give us a hundred of these wow. umbrella strollers. So we're doing something called a stroll in the park. And so we put out the notice that we have a hundred spots. And I mean, within an hour or two, it was full. So that's going to be an exciting morning for us when we're going to make it fun and we're yeah. in the park and they're going to come pick up their strollers with that their so little fun. ones. So thank so you fun. for your support on that. Well, I, my audience really is. I can brag on them. They're amazing and so generous. And all I ever have to do is post a link <laughs> and say, here's the Amazon registry. This pregnancy center needs help. And it's amazing. They yeah. just step up. That's all they need. They don't need nagging. They don't need a bunch of prompting from me. Yeah. They are willing and ready to help. And, you know, there are a lot of bad things about technology and big companies like Amazon. They don't always share our values. No. But what a redemptive way yeah. to use that service. It really makes it so easy. And so I just want to thank my audience for being as great and as generous as they are because they are always happy to step up and they love to see the pictures of the Amazon boxes. I love when y'all send those to me, just <laughs> the rooms and like rooms filled. And I love the story too of a couple years ago. Didn't you tell me that the yeah. Amazon driver um, who delivered all these packages Came because of my generous uh, audience that you guys share the gospel with him and he came to Christ in the yes. parking lot. I mean, they still, it oh. is, it, it, that's, I mean, there's just when 
the Lord and his people move. The, yes. Un, the unforeseen touches. And I mean, yes. it is unbelievable to uh, the drivers what is happening. And we get to tell the story because, you know, they're trying to figure it out as they're unloading Yes. All of these good stuff. Yes. So thank you. But yeah, we are, like, and you and your listeners, we're not pro-birth. Yeah. We are pro-life. Right. And that's just a tangible example of yes. it. Yeah. All right, last ad for the day, and that is from Blaze Originals. The third installment in the Blaze Originals series is available right now only to Blaze TV subscribers. And uh, the series is Texas versus the Feds, how the elites use the border crisis against us. I don't know if you guys have seen, but SCOTUS has basically sided with the federal government saying that, yeah, the federal government can come in and remove the barriers on the border that Texas has tried to install and keep installed to keep illegals out and the federal government is saying and eh, no just let them come in no matter what it is absolutely insane if you want to know what's really going on there why that is happening then you need to subscribe to blaze tv go to blaze tv.com use code Ally for $30 off your subscription. You can watch this. You can watch all my stuff, all the other stuff behind the paywall. Go to blazetv.com. Use code Ally to subscribe. You know, I love to retell the story that you told on this show a couple of years ago of a woman who came in pregnant she chose life. Y'all built a relationship with her and she wanted someone to be with her at the birth. And there were, you showed up at the hospital. She had been mm -hmm. sent home, but the hospital told you, Hey, she needs a car seat. She didn't have a car seat. You showed up to give her her car seat at her apartment to make sure that she would have that, to be able to bring her baby home when she really did go into labor. And you noticed that her apartment was pretty bare mm -hmm. that she didn't have any of the things that she needed. Um, and then God's people showed up, the volunteers showed up, friends showed up. They, I believe stocked her fridge, furnished yes. her apartment yeah. and she saw the love of Christ. She then gave her life to Christ and was baptized. She had a beautiful, healthy baby. And I love to tell, I love to tell that story because, and I always, I always cry when I do mm. because that is such a tangible example of what pro-lifers mm. everywhere, not just y'all, that's not rare. Mm -mm. That happens regularly no, among pro-life Christians absolutely. in every city, in every state across the country. Um, and we were talking before the camera started rolling, just a few updates um, from her in that particular story, if you want to share that. Yeah, I, two updates. One was um, the second part of that story is... I think it's just a, a lesson for the church. And by the church, I mean believers um, be, and, and really a call to action. When her daughter was, uh, I guess, about a year and a half old, it was time for baby dedication at the church that we took her to, Prestonwood Baptist Church. And uh, the pastor that was doing that dedication that day knew her story. And I had really, you know, brought him into her life as well. And so she she loved him, listened to his sermons, and, you know, really had connected with him. And so he, he called her and called me and said, do you think she'd be willing to have me during the dedication share just a little of her story? And she said, absolutely, yes. And so... Uh, my husband and I, we were her people. We're, we're, we love her dearly. And so she asked us to be her people on the front row, her family. And it was just such a moment. Just, oh gosh, God's grace to, you know, the pregnancy centers could be a really hard place to sometimes be and work and be called to. But these are the moments. These are just God's, you know, just... You can feel his joy. Mm -hmm. And so it's her turn and she walks in with her little one. Ugh. And um, my heart is just like beating. And the pastor has them turn on his mic. And he says to the church, 
um, introduces her and says, I just want to let you know that she came to us through the Prestonwood Pregnancy Center and just how brave she is and the decision she made. And we are, he just looked at her and said, we are so proud of you. And I, I could, I was sitting in the front row, but I could feel it. Yeah. I, the whole congregation rose to their feet <laughs> and started, I know her story, and started to clap. And I watched the shame fall off of her in that moment. And I thought to myself, if this was the way the church responded to every young person that finds themselves in an unattended or in a circumstance like a crisis pregnancy, an unplanned pregnancy, if we were the type of people that always celebrated the the decision for life, I'm not saying that we have to celebrate how that situation came to be, but we can celebrate her and the brave decision that she made. That mm. might help eliminate abortion in our nation. Yeah. But I just want... Well, so anyways, God. the other day I was... Um, you know, we probably, I get to touch base with her now um, every, maybe every few months, maybe every six months. And, um, but I hadn't seen her in, a, it was probably six or seven months. Her daughter is now in elementary school and she's oh, doing goodness. awesome. Yeah. And yeah, she's creative and just beautiful. And, you know, she showed, she came to my office about a year ago with her mama and um, just, so smart. I feel like a grandma. Do yeah. I sound like a grandma? No. <laughs> uh, so, um, but the other day I had to go to the doctor's appointment. And so I valeted my car. Don't judge me. It was running late. And um, so I pull up and I didn't real, I didn't notice the valet driver. And I come out and it's the client. And she just yells and screams and runs over to me. And she's hugging me and she's crying. Now, there are people at a busy downtown hospital lining up for their cars and she's telling them that her, her whole story and she's crying and she's saying you don't understand I've got my daughter because of of her and I'm like no 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 it's not because of me it's because of her and her brave choice and people are crying like they're, they're all just crying and they're like it's okay take your time um yeah mm. she's doing so well like it's not easy yeah. I'm not going to say this is easy. She's working valet to try to su support her daughter in a way that she can be at home as much as possible with her. And that gives her flexibility. But it's certainly it's hard. still tough. Yeah. My it's goodness. Still you know, that reminds me when you're talking about the congregation standing mm -hmm. up and clapping for her. It's just an earthly reflection of what the angels do when a sinner repents. That's what Jesus says, that yeah. the angels rejoice yes. when a sinner repents. And that is such a beautiful earthly example of that celebration. Yeah. We celebrate the affirmation of life yes. and choosing life that God puts before us. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So that's, that's just a tiny amazing. snippet. That's a tiny snippet of what Christian pregnancy centers do across the country yes. that God is doing through them. And it's so encouraging because if we were to get all of our news or our understanding of what's happening in the world from Twitter, from mm. social media, from mm. the headlines, we would just think that everything is exclusively bad, mm. that the world is going to hell in a handbasket. And as you've articulated, like things are hard. hard. Evil still happens. Mm -hmm. st sin still persists. We still have Satan doing his work. All that is happening. But God is moving. Greater God that is, is he working. that is in us than is in the world. Yes. And amen. Yeah. And I... I I love that about pregnancy centers across our nation. I get to spend a lot of time with pregnancy center directors. I get to go um, help now across this nation. And I get to see the incredible work, the incredible people that the Lord has called to do this work. And they're not there for the pay. And they're not there 
for the accolades. Um, in fact, so many centers in parts of this nation are actually under attack. It's it's getting and going to get harder to be a pregnancy center in America mm-hmm. uh, unless we see some changes in the federal government. Mm-hmm. They they current administration does not love us and are not supportive of us and see us as, um, I think the word hate speech has been used and uh, just don't get us. But when I walk into a pregnancy center and I watch the love and the care, they're they're the ones that are problem solving Mm -hmm. the situation, that are reaching out to other ministries and other nonprofits that are going the distance, that are not giving up, that are not transactional. Uh, I think thank you to the Lord that there are pregnancy centers across this nation doing yes. such incredible, powerful work. And um, yeah, and I challenge your listeners to find that local center, to go ask for a tour and to support them with their time, their resources, and most certainly their prayer. Mm-hmm. Uh, tell us about the Chosen Conference that's coming up. Well, talking about the church and the opportunity to be the church, um, I am on a steering committee for the Chosen Conference. It is really the first type of conference like what I'm about to describe in our nation. The plan is that this will be offered in other churches around the nation. But what it is, is it is a opportunity for the church to come together and to be equipped, to be enabled, to be empowered on the issues of adoption and foster care. Uh, In our nation, Ali Beth, there are uh, over, I believe the last statistic I saw was over 400,000 children in foster care. Mm. 117,000 are waiting for a permanent home. Three in every 1,000 children will end up in foster care in our nation. Wow. Just like the congregation that stood in that moment and provided such incredible healing, this is an opportunity for the church to do this again in a tangible way, to stand up and to provide for these children an opportunity for them to feel seen and loved and cared for. Sometimes I'll even use the word redeemed. Mm. And I mean, it's an opportunity for us to bring the mission field into the four walls of our home. Mm -hmm. And so this is a conference that is going to engage. It's going to engage churches. There will be educational opportunities for churches from anywhere that wants to come. I, Um, to be able to learn about starting their own adoption and foster care ministries. It's going to be an opportunity for people to come. Whether or not you've ever thought of adopting or fostering, um, I would ask that you just pray, Lord, what do you want me to do? It's a pro-life issue. This is a pro-life issue. And we don't care just about... uh, Babies at the point of conception, we care for people right through until the Lord decides it's their time to go home or the end of their life. That's where we have to advocate. We have to stand. And so this is an opportunity for us as the church to come and to say, Lord, what do you want me to do in this arena? I know my husband and I right now are praying about that very issue for our own family. What does that look like? Yes, we're empty nesters, and I'm in the golden years of grandparenting the best. But um, but what does that look like? How am I supposed to, am I supposed to foster? Am I supposed to support families that are fostering? What does that look like? So uh, I, we will be there not only because I'm on the steering committee, but also to learn about what's next. And, and there will be things like a resource fair there where there will be adoption agencies and funders and lots of people from different areas of the pro-life world that will be able to also help equip 
those in attendance. Uh, so you, they can register at prestonwood.org forward slash chosen. Okay. And the speakers at this are uh, Sadie Robertson Huff and her mom, Corey Robertson from Duck Dynasty fame. We've got the governor is coming to speak. We have Greg Mott from Houston coming up. We have, um, oh my gosh, there's just so many incredible and many, many breakouts uh, sessions as well. I'll be speaking on how you evalu- evaluate a good adoption agency. What does that look like? And mm. so, yeah, God tells us, James 1, 27 says that our faith, it's, it's purest when we are taking care of the um, fatherless and the widow in their greatest need. Yeah. And, you know, he tells us all through his word that he is a father to the fatherless and a defender of the weak. And you can find that in the Psalms. And I think we reflect his character when we're willingly stepping out and trying to figure out how do we fit in this? Yes. Yes. And amen. Well, I'm so excited for that. So everyone, you, you already said the link, but we'll put it in the description awesome. of this episode too. Yeah. So people can click on it. And if they're able to get there, come. Then, yes. Come. Uh, it's, you know, $25, but it starts at 8 30 in the morning it goes till 6 30 at okay. night we are not okay. not necessarily will you come for the whole day but you might you know you might choose which workshops and which speakers that you want to hear um, there is information at that website as well so they can look at the workshops and kind of plan out their plan out their time okay. i'm so proud of this the the goal is like i said for the church to step in i I think I told you over 400,000 um, children in foster care, children who need someone to love them. The government does a great job of removing kids from harm and providing resources, but they don't do, and nor should they do, the job of personal care and um, compassion and community and family and that's we know this best we're believers Mm -hmm. so yes and amen well thank you so much leanne i really appreciate you taking the time to come on oh thanks for having me ellie beth and thanks to your listeners they're i mean you're you're pretty lucky they're pretty good they are the best they really are i I love being on here for that it's just true it's just (laughs) true well thank you thank you so much (laughs) 